Okay, so I have heard that some of the readings um, are a little bit tougher to follow. So what I'd like to do when I can is create these little like, overview or commentaries to kind of help you through what I would expect to be some challenging parts. So uh, for 1.7, limits, continuity, and differentiability, we are unpacking the connection between these three ideas. So again, what is a limit? It's the idea of is this function really heading where we think it is, right? As I move the dial of the input X, um, you know, if you think about that like a volume knob, um, is the is the sound really approaching some um, level or is it, you know, blasting off to infinity or doing something else? And again, remember the limit can have this weird thing where it looks like it's approaching a point, but there's actually a hole there, okay? So that's the that's the conceptual difference is that the limit is just is this thing approaching this point doesn't matter if it's defined there now the idea of continuity is that you can draw this curve without picking up your pencil and this is how we want most functions to behave right there's a discontinuity one we want an explanation for it you don't want discontinuities in your paycheck um, equation right you don't want them on the you know, what dictates the temperature of the engine in your car. We want these things to be continuous. And so one way that we ensure that is that the limit exists at each point. So it's approaching where we think it is. And then the added quality of actually being defined at that same point that we think it's going to. Okay. So the reason that we have to be super concrete about this is so that we have a solid definition for what conditions we have to be able to take the derivative to find the instantaneous rate of change. So the limit has to exist. And, uh, and that just means that it's approaching continuity means that it's approaching and it actually exists at that point. And then to be differentiable means that the function is continuous. Um, so it has those two qualities, but that it's also quote unquote smooth. Um, which really just means, all right, it's defined there. It is approaching where we think it's approaching, but it can't be a sharp corner or a, a sort of cusp or it can't go vertical. Um, it means that we need to be able to approach with the tangent line um, as kind of like a ruler on a curve. This might be better with a, with a visual here. So like right here, all along here, we can take the slope of the tangent line and use the limit of the slopes of the secant lines from left and the right. And then they would, you know, eventually converge and just kiss at this one point and be completely perfectly tangent to this curve. And we could say, well, that's the, that's the derivative. That's the slope of this tangent line is the derivative. If we try to approach the slope of this point right here from the left and from the right, what's going to happen? Well, it doesn't go straight across. That's not quite how it works, right? This is an infinitesimal point. This is a place where we cannot find the derivative because there's this sharp corner. It, the behavior of the function radically changes. So we can't really say like what happens right there because it doesn't really make sense because what happens as we turn the dial up on X um, is it hits this like crazy disjoint peak. So it's, it's like a switch of some kind. So we can't take the derivative here. So we say it's not differentiable here. All along here is fine. This is fine. And then there's a discontinuity here. So again, this breaks the idea of, of being able to find the derivative or differentiability. So this is really the, the three main ideas that we're unpacking here. So I just wanted to kind of give a overview and then I'll give you some tips along the, along the way in the reading here real quick. All right, so for the preview activity, what we're doing is seeing if the limit exists at each of these points, okay? so. At each of these a values, refreshing ourselves on does a limit exist um, at these points? So again, limit has to exist if it agrees where it's approaching from the left and from the right of that point. So you know you can see here at a equals negative two, what's the function doing? From the left, it's approaching two. From the right, it's approaching negative one. There's this huge gap here. We can't say that the function is approaching a certain value. So we say that the limit would not exist here. At a equals negative three, the function from the left and from the right are both approaching the height of three. So this is the limit does exist here. Even though I said it's not differentiable, that's a different um, quality. 
right? The limit can't exist, but it still might not be differentiable because it's not smooth. Um, and then down here, you have an example of where the limit exists, but the function's not defined at this particular point, or it's not continuous because there's a hole, right? So as I approach x equals negative 1 from the left, what's the output doing? Scooting down here to negative 3, same from the right. If I come from the right of negative 1 on the input axis, the output is approaching negative 3, well-ish. I guess it's a little bit lower. Um, so here is it, it's discontinuous, but the limit does exist because it is still approaching that point infinitely close. Okay. And then you got to ask yourself, does the derivative exist at each of these points? Okay. So do exactly what I did before, talk about the slope of the tangent line. Is it appropriate to have the slope of the tangent line here? I kind of gave that one away. But think about it at all these other points, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, up to 3. So here, we're going to be clearly defining what it means to have a limit at a point. And this is a big definition. And I want you to write this down in your, in your notes, but I want you to understand what this really means, which is that if you approach the same number from the left and from the right, meaning the same height as you change the input dial, that's when we say that the limit exists. Okay? So for example, here, the limit does not exist here because as we approach 1 from the left, okay, so at, at x equals 1, from the left, we're approaching a height of 2. As we approach 1 from the right, we're coming in on this axis here, the height of f is approaching 3. So this is why we say that the limit doesn't exist because they're approaching different values. Okay, um, And this also happens here, right? This is approaching um, two from the left, but from the right, it starts to inf uh, infinitely oscillate back and forth. Okay, so with the, it can't agree on any single point. The closer and closer you get, the wilder it, it starts to uh, bounce between three and one. Okay, so the limit doesn't exist for either of these functions. So here's the, here's the big takeaway. And again, this might seem kind of abstract, and it is, but it's, it's an important distinction that we say the limit exists only if it agrees from the left of the point and the right of the point, okay? And, you know, you can kind of just think about your two fingers pointing at the same point, sandwiching a point between them, as opposed to being pointing in different directions. All right, so you'll, you'll highlight this through a couple uh, examples here. And then you'll move on to defining, all right, if that's what a limit means, what does it mean to be continuous at a point? So continuity, again, intuitively, is just you can draw it without picking up your pencil. Um, and so here we highlight the difference of how you can have one point subtracted that's not really um, continuous, but the limit can still exist, right? So again, these things can kind of have these overlapping properties that aren't quite, you know, just yes or no or black or white. And so here we come up with a very formal definition of continuous. The limit exists, f is defined, and the limit that exists is the point that we defined it at. All right, so that mathematically describes how to draw something without picking up your pencil, okay? And we call it continuous. And then here, you know, some properties of con continuity and continuous functions. If you know that you've got a continuous function, like x squared or minus 2x, these are functions that don't have any breaks. And so this allows you to compute limits a lot simpler because you know, well, if it's continuous, then the limit is what the function is defined to be. I don't need to worry about that. It's only when there's discontinuities that I need to be concerned. All right, so you have another activity exploring these, this idea. All right, and the last idea is being differentiable at a point. And what this means is that it is both continuous and smooth. And so here you're seeing the sharp corner being highlighted that I talked about before. And so this sharp corner is the problem here. We would say it's not differentiable at this point because, again, if you're sketching in, um, you know, slopes of the secant lines to eventually become the slope of the tangent line, at this point, 
you would be confused on what to do, right? Oh, is it really this way? Is it this way? Is it perfectly flat? The fact that that's the case means that the limit doesn't exist there. So it's not smooth, so it's not differentiable. Okay, and that's the big idea. So to grab these uh, points, and here's kind of the bullet points of, it's not they're not the contradictions, but the seemingly confusing places about how well, the limit can exist, but it's not, continuous right it can be continuous but it's not differentiable these are the things that we need to highlight and point out so that things go the way we need them to go all of the time right so we have our our logical house in order so that we can apply this correctly and not worry about it um, and then you'll have another example looks like the same graphs so you'll kind of explain what's happening from a differentiable point of view as before you already looked at uh, in the preview, where the limit exists, you know, is it continuity? Is it continuous or discon discontinuous? Oh my goodness! And then um, here again are these bullet points that we put, but I'd like you to put them in your own words as well, in kind of this plain spoken way that I'm explaining. All right. So I hope you find this helpful. I'll try to do this when I can, and um, yeah, let me know if you have questions.